Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Yanza Battle, and today I'm going to show you how to paint a classic Necron color scheme. Here are the paints I'll be using. The first thing I did is I primed the model black. I'm using an airbrush, but you could also use a rattle can to prime. And next, I'm applying a 50-50 mix of Games Workshop Lead Belcher and some black paint. I'm applying this through my airbrush, but you could also apply this with the paintbrush, just doing many thin coats. And now, for this next layer, I'm going to be sponging it on. And for the sponging, I'm going to be ripping a makeup eyeshadow brush in half. And I'm going to be applying my next layer, which is straight Games Workshop Lead Belcher with the sponge. Now, the nice thing about sponging it on is because it's going to hit the high areas, but it's not going to hit the lowest areas and recesses of the model. And because this is metal paint, some metal paints don't like to dry brush very well. And so sponging is a great way to replicate that with the metal paint. Next, I'm going to be sponging on some Games Workshop Rune Fang Steel, which is a bright silver color. And I'm going to be applying this the same way with half of a makeup brush. And I'm going to be applying this a little bit lighter than I applied the lead belcher because I want to leave a little bit of that last color showing through. Next, I'm going to be sponging on a little bit of some blue paint mixed with the Rune Fang Silver, some Games Workshop Lothorn Blue, and I'm putting in a drop of matte medium just to help thin it a little bit more because I don't want this to get very good coverage. I want it just to tint the metal a very, very slight blue, which is going to add a little bit of visual interest to the paint, and it's going to make it look a little bit less like natural metal. And now I'm going to be doing the same thing with the green paint. I'm mixing some P3 Worm Green with some Rune Fang Steel, and now I'm going to be sponging this onto the model, applying it very, very splotchy because I want to leave plenty of the colors underneath showing. This is just going to further tint the model. Next, I'm going to wash the entire model with some Games Workshop Null Oil. And while that is still wet, I'm going to be putting on a little bit of Contrast Black Templar. I'm applying this to some of his joints and to his wrists and ankles. This is just going to help differentiate between some of the spots in his armor. Then I painted his gun with some contrast black templar. And now I'm thinning down some white paint heavily because I'm going to be doing a bit of a pin wash on his gun. First I brushed the barrel of his gun with some water and now I'm dipping some very very thin down white paint so that it flows into the cracks on his gun. The paint is very, very thin down, so it may take a few coats, but the nice thing about the pin washing is that the paint is gonna flow where you want it, and so you shouldn't have to do a lot of cleanup. Once I finished with picking out those small details on his gun, I then went in with some more white paint and I painted his bayonet and the, one of the tubes on his weapon. I also used this white paint to pick out his eyes. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to be dry brushing his gun with some P3 Warm Green. If I had planned a little better, I would probably be doing this dry brushing before I had painted the white, but since the white is just going to get painted Warm Green anyway, it's no big deal. All right, and now I'm gonna paint all of the areas that I painted white, warm green. First, I'm gonna be watering it down so that I can get it into the nooks and crannies on his gun. And then I applied it to the bayonet on his gun and to his tube. Next, I'm painting on some watered down P3 Cygnus yellow. I'm applying this over the areas that I painted warm green, and usually yellow paint doesn't cover very well, and I'm watering it down a little further, but that's okay because I want the green to show underneath because in the end, I want the effect of a glowing green weapon. Next, I'm applying a wash with some Games Workshop Beal Tan Green, and I'm applying this to all of the areas that I've been working on with the green and yellow paints. I'm applying this on fairly thick, but then I'm going back in with a clean wet brush to take off any material that I think is a little bit too heavy. When I applied the wash to the tube of his gun, I went back in with, with a clean wet brush and I took off most of the wash because I wanted plenty of the colors underneath to shine through. And then I applied the wash more heavily to the blade part of his bayonet to help add a little bit more contrast and to make it look like a glowing green weapon. I also applied the wash to his eyes and I splashed it around his face to make it look like his eyes were glowing green. And I added more coats of Beal Tan Green to areas like the, where the tubes connect to the gun and the bottom of his axe to help darken the color. Then I went in with some Games Workshop Contrast Black Templar and I cleaned up the gun. I also used Black Templar to dot the small little details on his gun. And there is a finished, classic Necron Warrior. If you like the look of the base this Necron is standing on, then stay tuned tomorrow for a video tutorial on how to create that base. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions on videos you would like to see us do, please leave them in the comments below. If you followed along with this tutorial, please post your work on Instagram and tag Eon's Battle so that we can share it. Thanks for watching.